Hello there and welcome to JJ Painting. I am JJ and today's video, as you can tell from the title, we're going to be talking a bit more about Chaos Space Marines and did they get harder to paint? I would argue... kind of. Yes. Well, maybe no, but also maybe yes. But in any case, who knows? So, as you know from the title of the video, that's what we'll be talking about and we're going to be painting, case in point, this model right here, one of the greater possessed, the other one of the half here. But also as a side note, I don't normally talk about what colour schemes I'm going to do before I get into the video, but for this guy I'm going to be doing what I think of as a custom World Eaters colour, but it's based more off the architecture of corn buildings, so it's more about the brass and the bone and ivory colours and obviously what comes with that. So there's going to be a bit less red than you might be expecting, but you know, let's see how this goes and you know, let me know your thoughts for the colour scheme at the end, I'm curious to know. So, we're going to be talking all about Chaos Space Marines, have they got harder to paint? Right. Let's crack on. If I wanted to answer this question in the most straightforward manner possible, my answer would be yes, well, no, well, maybe. And to get into that, I suppose we're gonna have to go into a bit more detail, aren't we? So the first thing I'm gonna say is we're leaving aside the actual paints and the brushes themselves because they've changed a lot over the years. But I generally think it's fair to say in terms of paints, it's become more accessible to paint most things and Chaos Marines definitely fall into that category but that's not the paints. We're just talking about what we're getting with the models here. So this video is probably gonna get quite technical, but that's just the way this is gonna work. So let's start with a quick history lesson and a rundown of who we are and where we've come from. So up until 2012, the majority of the Chaos Space Marine aesthetic could be described as like Space Marines, but a bit spikier. So obviously the silhouette is very much the same. These are still very much Space Marines, Space Marines. And as a result, a lot of the equipment is obviously the same. The vehicles are obviously the same. These are all incredibly obvious points, but it's worth highlighting because they all looked the same and they shared a lot of the same aesthetic across armies. So largely speaking, up until very recently, they had the same sorts of melter guns. They had the same sorts of power swords in many respects, the same sorts of power fists and the same sorts of even terminators as well, which was interesting, but hey ho. Now, when we take all that into context, it's unsurprising, therefore, that the majority of the actual painting of the models was very much the same. But the other thing to bear in mind is that there were a few things which were different, and the most overt thing was obviously all the race trims on each model. So if we look at an old school Chaos Space Marine, they have far more raised areas. So the trims around the ankles, the trims around the wrists, and around the arms are all raised up a lot more. You don't see that on a regular Space Marine. So obviously that did change a little bit in terms of how you would shade your models and sometimes your color palette, because obviously those raised areas meant that you'd have more opportunities to have multiple tones on your models. Whereas with regular Space Marines, you only had the raised shoulder pads on the raised trims on the shoulder pads traditionally. You wouldn't normally have it on things like the ankles or around the hips unless you're Space Wolves, but that's a different matter entirely. And even then, for most of their history, a lot of these things were very much the same. So that, like I said, they had the same kits, they had the same vehicle kits. But when we get to 2012, the reason I highlight that is because something changed. And what really changed is if we look at the Dark Vengeance kit and some of the models in there, you do start to see a slight difference in the aesthetic. So rather than it being the trims being part of the model, they seem to actually become a bit more prominent. So rather than it just being a shoulder trim or an interesting trim around the torso, suddenly that becomes far more prominent. That becomes a much bigger part of the overall surface area of the model. So straight away, you're not highlighting the cool color as much. If we look also at what Chaos Marines are, which is obviously warp corrupted space marines, we also start to see far, far more of the space marine aesthetic disappearing in favor of a warp touched look. So this is where we start to see things like the armor and the flesh seeming to melt into one thing. And that's interesting from an aesthetic point of view, but also it kind of helped Games Workshop take space marines away from looking so much like regular space marines. And if we fast forward to our where we are now in 2021, we can see the conclusion of that obviously being in things like the Death Guard and the Thousand Suns. Those kits are very different to how their old metal and resin kits were from about 10 years ago. But this doesn't really answer the question as to are they harder to paint? Well, the first thing to say about having these new raised areas, these trims which are far more prominent on the model, and the areas where the flesh and the armor seem to start to meld together, 
is another thing is that we start to see far more flesh on the models themselves as you can see here with this greater possessed i'm painting um, but what that means is that we're starting to also see a lot more unnatural flesh so unlike if you were painting the faces of a cadian or a space marine or a sister of battle or arguably even an orc which is all quite uh one tone if you want it to be if you're going to be painting demon flesh, then obviously it's far more mottled, it looks far less natural. It also has to have that blend of both looking like it seeps into the armor and then into the flesh a lot more, so it's far less clean cut as this is armor, this is flesh. There is a blending here for it. So that's quite complicated. Even for me, I still struggle with it a little bit. But with that said, the other things where what has helped is that the modern models are far more thickly detailed and obviously since 2017, with the advent of Primaris and the very uh, discreet scaling up of Chaos Marines, it's clear to see that most Chaos Marines are a bit bigger, a bit more detailed, and have a much larger surface area. And this is good for the Chaos Marine players out there because painting those models, which were a lot smaller, was a little bit tricky considering the overall surface area of the raised trims on every part of the model. But on a larger model, it's a bit easier. And the trims themselves in the molding process come out a bit more cleaner. The lines are a bit more distinctive and the raised areas on the trim itself are a little bit more prominent. So it makes highlighting them and shading them far more straightforward than it used to be, which is a good thing. Now, if we also then take this to the next step and the next point I'm trying to make is that Chaos Marine models, especially the newer ones, because they have very subtly started to move away from Space Marines, it does mean there are some things which are less obvious and require a bit more imagination. So a lot of the pipings, for example, like I said, you can look at those and you can think that is just a normal cable, or you can look at it and go, does that need to be a bit more fleshy in its tone? So bring it back to that idea of a lot of the armor and the flesh is starting to meld into each other. And if we then think about how that works with the extremes of this, so Possessed, for example, which even in 2007, I think caught a lot of people ever so slightly off guard. Because even though those models are now about 13 years old, they still look quite good. But also, they have this very interesting aesthetic where a lot of the ways they're painted, even now, by most people, it very much feels like they're trying to separate the armor from the flesh. But obviously, they were the original models where the armor ran into the flesh. So that's something which can't really be separated. And I think it's why, especially for me, it was very hard to know how to paint them. And also, even though they aren't the biggest models out there, the original Possessed are actually still quite technical and quite tricky to paint because you're not just painting flesh, you're also painting armor that molds directly into flesh and where there is a more prominent fleshy areas or more prominent bony or shittiness areas, you can still see where they mold back into the flesh. So it's far less clean cut across the entire range. And that is quite easy to see why people find it quite complicated. And that's before we even get to things like the demonic vehicles. Now, the most interesting thing about the demonic vehicles is they're all still very new, and how people feel about them in-game is one thing, but how they've manifested as an actual hobby task is something else entirely. The Maul of Fiend, the Forge Fiend, and the Helldrake all were of this newer design of still lots of raised areas being very prominent, so lots of trims that actually look more like scales than they actually do armor plating, which is really interesting. Whereas the Defiler comes from that older school where everything's a bit more blocky and a bit more boxy, even though it is, you know, a giant mecha tank with legs, but it is still quite a blocky model because of how it is shaped. But when you look at the slightly more sleek design on the other demon engines, it's clear to see where the gulf in age comes into it. Now, the Defiler was always very much felt like a machine with a demon in it, so you can see that just by looking at it quite clearly. Whereas it's not that straightforward with the Forge Fiend, the Mauler Fiend, and the Helldrake. There are all still parts of the model where you can clearly see what could be interpreted as flesh uh, poking through the armor plates or even quite prominently on some of the extremities of the models. And I believe even the demon, and I believe even the Forge Fiend's cannons can be interpreted as being half encased in flesh. So when we think about that in that respect, it is clear to see why suddenly we're having to go back to this blending of demonic flesh into armor, but even bigger now because it's on this massive demonic tank and a very large engine. So that's what I think in that one. So are these things harder to paint? Well, the good news is obviously these models are all much larger than they used to be back in the day. I could never imagine something like a current Chaos Marine or a current Terminator in a smaller scale actually being that easy to paint. But at the same time, I generally think that because we've had more years of paints evolving and more techniques being developed and re-examining especially a lot of the color schemes, 
have actually helped quite a lot. If you look very closely at things like word bearers throughout the year and alpha lesion throughout the years, the color schemes don't exactly match up. There are very subtle and very small variations. In some respects, this has been one of the benefits for those legions for not being quite as consistently in the eye of the public and not having to be quite as in brand lockdown like the Ultramarines have been or the Dark Angels have been. The Chaos Marines have had a little bit more chance to experiment and do their own thing, especially since many of them had different color schemes in the Horus Heresy. So that means the people who want to play World Eaters can play World Eaters using the Chaos Marine range in white. If you want to play Empress Children, you can paint them in their classic purple and you don't have to really fix them into one thing. And this, incidentally, is one of the other things that's worth mentioning. The Empress Children, strictly speaking, don't have a fixed colour scheme, which is one of the reasons I think people struggle with them a little bit. Yes, the Noise Marines have always very prominently had that pink and black aesthetic, which does look quite cool. However, I do think the description of it, the garish colours, the bright colours, the oily colours, all over the models obviously means for a lot of people who don't necessarily have the most amount of time to start experimenting and creating color schemes and just want to know what colors to use may feel a little bit turned off so it's why you will see colors in the pre-heresy empress children colors across the chaos marine range a bit more frequently than you might otherwise think you would so i think it's fair to sum up by saying chaos marines have become easier because of how the paints have developed but the models themselves can be a bit trickier because of how the new mo models are and how the color schemes of the chaos marines have been left in many ways very open to interpretation but i want to as always leave it open to you what do you think do you think chaos marines are harder to paint than they were a few years ago do you think they've become easier because the paints have become a little bit more accessible especially with things like bases being separate from layers now from the foundation paints let me know your thoughts I look forward to hearing from you. So, those are my thoughts all about the Chaos Space Marines and if they got harder to paint. So, like I said, let me know your thoughts. As Do you think they've gotten harder to paint? Do you think they were always easier than normal Marines? Or were they always a bit harder? Was there always just more to paint, but it wasn't actually harder to paint? I don't know. Let me know your thoughts. I'm interested to know. And obviously, we've now finished up our Greater Possessed. He looks like this. Yes. In his, all his brassy, glorious goodness. So, you know, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Do you like the colour scheme? Do you agree with what I say? Hit me up. And whilst you're down there, hit that like button and subscribe. All that good YouTube shilly stuff. I try to post my videos every Wednesday and Friday, so keep an eye out below. I apologise there hasn't been a lot of Challenge 99 stuff recently. That's just been, unfortunately, the way these things have gone. There hasn't been a huge amount to post about because I'm making other videos and doing other things. But, you know, thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for sticking with it. There will be more Challenge 99 content in the future. So, as always, thank you very much for watching. Goodbye and have a lovely day.